Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, let's go over animations. So in this video, we're just going to go over kind of the theory and the idea. And so it's going to be, a, hopefully, a pretty short video. In the next video, we'll go over the actual code. But there's some things that we do want to understand before we move forward. Now, we've done lots of animations in the past, whether it was through Flutter, whether it is through you know, Angular, Dart, Web for programming, whatever. But I never really talked about details of that. And this is something where we do have to kind of know because it's in the code. And for us to understand the code, we have to know some of the basics of an animation itself. All right. So first of all, this is the application right here. I'm just going to run it real quickly. And so you have a little spot and it gradually grows a little bit bigger. Notice it's a little jerky right here. Um, I don't have the best computer, the best graphics card. All right, so, so that's what our animation is going to do. First of all, what is an animation? Okay, let's back up a little bit. So basically an animation is having some image move on the screen, right? So we've done animations before, right? When we did like the tabs and stuff like that, we would have objects moving in and out of the screen or widgets moving in and out of the screen. And so we saw that type of animation. So this is going to be more about custom animations. So what how what are the different types of animations? I, I could think of several different types. Okay, so you can get an image that goes from here or an icon, or I'm just gonna call them images. Okay, you have like an image that's up here, and you move it to a different side of the screen, right? That was kind of like with the tabs, we would move it back and forth. Um, that's one type of image. The other type of image is right, like right here, it starts one size and it grows. Okay, and then there's another type of image where you would actually like rotate, spin things around. Um, maybe the axis is right here and you'd spin it in circles or however. So those are the major types of animations that I can imagine right now. Maybe there'll be some more types of animations coming up, but I can imagine that. And um, everything else is going to be some component of that, right? So maybe you have several different images moving around. But those are the moving the structure, spinning the structure, changing the size of the structure. Okay. Um, or actually making a structure up here. So I guess that would be the an, another type. Then, so how do we, what are the basics of animation? Well, the basics of animation would be the basics of motion, right? And so I'm going to say this is distance divided by time, right? So that's important. We have an object that's right here. We move it down all the way here. It takes a certain amount of time. And it, again, if this is too basic for you, I'm really sorry. You could probably just skip this video and go to the next one, okay? But this is just the getting the basics. You get an, uh, an object and you move it all the way across. Let's just say it takes a second to move from here all the way down here. If you if it takes one second to move here, that's about one second, right? What if I'm going to get an object that moves here to down here in one second? It's going to move much slower, right? It's going to move slower compared to the one that takes goes all the way across the screen in one second. It'll get to the destination from here to here or here to here at the same time, but the one that moves farther has to travel faster, right? Simple stuff, I understand, but at the same time, let's just keep this all in mind because we will encounter this type of stuff in the future, all right? We met, when we talk about animation, what are we actually doing? So I'm getting an object that's here, and I move it here, and move it here, move it here. What am I actually doing with animation? What actually happens is that I get the an image and I redraw the screen so that the image is a little bit farther down. I redraw the screen so that the image is a little bit farther down itself. And so that's how this application or any types of animations work. I'm constantly redrawing the screen out with the object moving ever so slightly with each successive draw. Every time you redraw it, it's, it's in a different location. And so it gives us the illusion of motion. Right, so that's what animation actually is, and that's where FPS frames per second kicks in. So, how many times does this system draw itself? So, this is actually when you animate it, it is drawing itself over and over and over again, so it makes it seem like it's actually a bigger pick, it's actually moving, right? So, generally, Flutter aims to be at about 60 frames per second. In other words, this thing is going to draw. 60 frames per second. For every second that goes by, this is going to be redrawn over and over 60 times. So it has a nice and smooth animation. What if that is, is instead of 60 frames per second, it's like two frames per second. It's going to be very jerky, right? So 
if it's gonna if I'm gonna move from here to here in this two frames, one, two, it's gonna go doom, doom, like that. So it's gonna be very jerky in its motion. So um, if you the more frames per second, the smoother because the each incremental each movement itself is different. And um, if you have more frames per second, it becomes smoother. Okay, just for the record, like movies and DVD, I, I think the minimum amount is 24 frames per second. When you have a movie, the minimum amount you want is to draw, redraw the screen 24 times every second. If it's less than that, then you start to see jerky motions on the, the images themselves. Okay, so who really likes that? So we have to keep in mind frames per second. Sometimes, and many times frequently, the, the hardware, the screen, has to draw 60 times per second, but the hardware, the, the processor, the program runs at either a faster speed or a slower speed. It's usually a faster speed. So the processor can actually travel uh, or process more than 60 frames per second. But you can only draw 60 frames per second because that's all the com uh, that's all the screen can do. It physically can't draw the screen more than 60 frames per second. All right. What happens when they're out of sync? So in other words, the system wants to to go 60, 120 frames per second, but the the, the screen can only draw 60 frames per second. We see some what we call artifact. We see some changes in the in the um, animation. The most common is called tearing. If you, uh, you know, YouTube tearing in a video, you can actually see that there is a differences in the screen when things are moving around, when there is this lack of synchrony, when there's this lack of matching, there's a mismatch between the what the screen is capable of drawing and what the program is capable of processing. Okay. So in order to prevent this, you don't want there to be a mismatch between what the system can draw and what the physical um, uh, physical process, the physical display can actually draw. So you need some type of synchronization. You need to be able to match the two. And that's what we call vertical synchronization. So vertical synchronization comes in when your system can draw at a different rate as your screen, okay? But you want to be able to mostly slow down your application so that it only prints or displays at 60 frames per second. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. That's why we run into some problems with videos and animations themselves. So, so we, we're going to have to go ahead and make sure we match these two systems together. All right, and that's what we call V-Sync or vertical synchronization. How do you do that? Okay, this is a little unclear to me. There is something called a ticker. So programs see in order to match the vertical, the, do the vertical synchronization in order to do synchronize the screen with the underlying application, the underlying application, if you use the correct libraries, of course, for every time the screen redraws, okay, again, 60 times per second, every time it draws and redraws and it redraws, it, the, the system, if you make the program correctly, releases what we call a tick. And so it is monitored by a ticker. And every single time you draw this tick, I'm sorry, draw the screen, you release a ticker or a tick, all right? If any of you play a musical instrument, if, you know, sometimes you may play the instrument, let's just say a piano, you're playing a piano and sometimes you play too fast and too slow, it's a, you shouldn't be doing that, right? You should be playing it at the right pace at the right time, not some notes you play quicker, just it's supposed to be, a particular note should be played at the same length every time. If it's a different note, then it'll be different, but but the, that particular note. But sometimes you just speed through certain sections and slow down. But because most of the time we don't have the experience to know, hey, I got to have the right pace every time, right? So we have what we call a metronome. So the metronome says, ding, ding. It, it, it has a beat where you can follow, and so you don't end up playing too quickly or too slowly, depending on how you're actually playing, okay? This ticker seems to be like a metronome. It seems to be, this, this ticker seems to be releasing a bit of information. The nature of this information, I'm not exactly clear on. Uh, you know, if anybody has a video or reference or something that can actually explain what this ticker, what the, what the nature of this, what exactly is a tick that's being released? Is it a bit? Is it what, what is it? You know, but, but that, that would be great. 
but but that's what actually happens and the ticker seems to be how the synchronization uses these ticks in order to synchronize again 60 frames per second um uh, drawing on the screen so you need a ticker in order to synchronize the application with the screen and the display all right so those are the basics <laughs> Sorry if you're falling asleep. I'm really let's go over the code in the next video. But those are the basics behind animation. And we have to understand those general concepts before we go and we start making these applications because some of this code makes no sense if we don't understand the basics. Okay? So let's move on and let's start start with animation. Thanks.